restroom. You ready? Yeah, no, that's, that's totally. I, I agree with you that it's bullshit, but I, I have a problem with arguing, you know, going, you're full of bullshit, shut up. Because that's what yeah. they're, that, that's their argument. You're full of bullshit, shut up. I'm like, okay, let's follow the logic of your argument. You know? No, no I'm not. I, I'm not saying that they're full of shit. I, what I'm saying is that what they're presenting is not logical to begin with, and therefore, if we need to have a scientific discussion, we need to establish the ground rules. The first premise of the ground rule is that you must understand why we have economics in the first place. And that if you're going to argue something that is counter to why we have economics, we cannot discuss it. Because well, that, uh, uh, okay, but, but Marcel... That, you cannot do that. You, it does not make any sense. If you were to put that into a computer program, it would, it would, it would be garbage. I, 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 I know that, Marcel, but the problem with saying the argument's bullshit rather than having them go through the logic of why it's no, bullshit themselves. No, I don't, I don't just dismiss them. I, uh, we establish a premise to which to discuss. Uh, I know. And, uh, okay, but Mar Marcel, here's the thing you need to understand. I mean, heck, one of the core things uh, that, I mean, some of these people actually think that, well, actually, I think we should get rid of private property and go back to communism. You know, communism... Yes, exactly. It, 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 that's what I'm saying. You need to have them have the logic of making... Well, wait a minute. Then that, that means when they get to that point, when we get to that point, because there is a, an extensive, and believe me, I've argued the most communist of communists. Uh, and if we get to that point, then the, the conversation is no longer about economics, but, okay, where does their philosophy, not economic model, lead to. Now, the, the the deal of it is that you say you're for an increase of taxes. I'm not for it. Well, I, an increase of taxes is an admission to our, our budget spending, which is, is a massive failure. There's no reason why we need to raise taxes at this point in time. Aside from the fact that we spent all the money. <laughs> no, that, no, that, no we, have, we have budgets that are on a core. We, we're not... We are budgeting more than we're going to intake, and therefore the argument is to not is to maintain your budget, which is what these budget battles are. Certainly, if we were to leave it to the Democrats, they would simply just borrow more or find a way to create. Well, okay, if you don't want to, if 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 you, okay, well, and that's why we're having a saying because at the end of the day, the, the thing you have to keep in mind when you're talking about anything regarding taxes, whether you're talking about lowering taxes or raising taxes. The point of taxes is no, no, no the, but the point of taxes is to pay for government. Rather, it's at the local level, federal, whatever. The point of taxation is to pay for government. So, are we going to utopian? Are we going to talk? I mean, for for the purpose of this discussion, we're talking about where the United States is today. We spend three point five to four trillion dollars, and we're fifteen trillion in debt. And we take yep. in, le and we're two trillion short. We spend two, tr but if you if you put social security money towards social security where it should go, instead of counting uh, it as money to be spent, so much, we have so much frivolous spending. Um, that what immediately what I would do, to be honest with you, is withdraw all federal funding for state level functions, and that'll save your budget immediately. In, in other words, there. Education, transportation, um, are two massive departments that are actually state level, not federal. And well, right uh, now, well, I, I happen to agree with you under Tenth Amendment that that should be up to the individual states and right, counties and cities. Part of education is paid for. My house pays taxes for my, my schools that I participate in. But it's currently federally subsidized. But because the federal government decided to add that, you realize there was a point in time we didn't have federal subsidization schools. I know that. Okay. So, and, I, and this is recent history, not not old time. I know. And, and what I'm saying is that there are operations the federal government has no business being in that are local functions. Immediately, immediately, I would, I just, that, that is an immediate cutoff because you obviously have to cut off cut programs. Those are the programs you cut because it is not the federal responsibility. In other words, you could say that those that are dependent solely on federal programs, which have a federal mandate, won't suffer. Because you, uh, you, you, the point of, uh, of winning elections is to, to, is to make the impact um, less of an impact on, on the voter. And the way to do that is to return 
what the federal government is taking from the states and let's restore it back to the states and then focus on what the federal government does best to what was allocated to the federal government for step one. Um, I, I, let, now, I, I, while I don't disagree with what you're saying, let me ask you an honest question. Mm -hmm. What percentage of the school districts in this country do you think could survive if federal funding was cut tomorrow? All of them would survive. To be honest with you, all of them would. They would. The, the, the thing of it, the, the reason why I say that all of them would survive is that, is that it's a fallacy to say that one school system would fail um, based upon, because what they would say is that there's not enough tax collectors to support a certain school, which would mean that if there's not enough tax collectors to support a certain school, there's not enough tax collectors to support anything within that city. Because the way local support works is you have a certain amount of employment and property established within that area. And if that's not established, then I question anything that's functioning in that area. Well, as somebody who lives in an area that spent the last 25 years driving away any major source of employment, I can tell you there are places in the country that are ready to self-destruct. Guess what this country has? Guess what this country has? The beauty of it. You can get up and move and have the ability in this country far greater than any other country in the world. Well, there are other countries that are just, that, that there are few that have equal property as we see in the United States, but not many. Um, that is the mo mobility about of property. You know, Hernaldo de Soto, one of my favorite economists, who's a Peruvian economist, explains why the third world stays a third world, which has to do with property rights. And, and in this country, if you, it's like, if you are in an area that is dying, it is telling you something. <laughs> it, it, it is telling you that you, you must leave. It, it, it's like if you are in any other condition that is life-threatening to you, you would escape that condition and, and do something about it. And therefore, if you're in a condition where all signs tell you that this little town has lost its productivity and has moved, there's nothing stopping you from moving. You can move. Well, there, there are some factors wait, stopping wait, you. Wait, wait. Oh, no. Oh, well, Marcel, there, there's foreclosure and all this other stuff. Yeah, you know what the banks do? I've lived that kind of thing. Yeah, banks, you, you, were in, you were in where you were. My guess would be back... Uh, were you there in the 80s and the 70s? Well, I was born in 75. But, I mean, the thing of it is, is that I, I've lived debt settlements. Let's put it that way. I've lived and know how to negotiate with banks for debt settlements. I know how to walk away from property and, and reinitiate new property. And I, I, I am, I'm not rich at all. But I had the initiative to figure out how to do it. You don't have to be rich to do that. You just have to know the credit laws. Unfortunately, most people exactly. don't. Exactly. You have to just be a person and find out something. But it is not the government or federal government's job to compensate for someone's lack of initiative to do something. That it, we are here to provide even opportunity to you. Now, if the opportunity is not there for you to understand, that's a problem. But if your laziness or excuses get in the way of it, I'm sorry. Well, not. we haven't gone into everything in the taxation well, thing, but you're actually moving on to the next issue. Which I've got, I've, I've got to fix this point. Okay. And that the reality of it is, is that there's not very many places that would crumble because of federal subsidization. That's all scare tactics and mythology, what have you. Like my local schools, do they have fundraisers to help compensate to where the lack of taxes exist? There's, I guarantee you, if there's enough property and functional economics happening in your town, there's nothing to worry about. However, if your town is dying, then listen to the fucking messages. Now, um, th but that is the most pragmatic, realistic way of cutting the budget without hurting those mandates that, that are truly the federal level take care of. That's step one. That's why I say that. Well, okay, uh, aside from education, which other ones would you consider not to be the federal level? What well, about I, highways? Uh, Department of Transportation is, is any, any transportation needs are state level. And, uh, police and firemen are state level. Um, well, is, is there a federal program to pay for police or firemen? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. 
Oh, Substance God. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, there's lots of shit in the federal government people want to use. Like, really, they, we shouldn't even be discussing police and fire at the federal level. No, that's a local level. The only, th- the only, the only two entities that should be in any way, shape, or form federal within the borders of the United States are the National Guard and the FBI. You can make argumentations for the NSA, but the NSA is really an intelligence gathering thing, and it's supposed to largely be operating abroad. So within the borders of the United States, I would argue you have two, maybe three. Now you could argue that. Uh, Coast Guard and other uh, sections of the armed forces have local responsibilities, but that's, you know, again, that's not the primary local authority. That's the last act if, you know, the local is overwhelmed authority. Mm. Yeah, and you know what? I want to make an argument because I know the argument will be, well, Mr. Well, Marcel, the, the, you're arguing that I must move my house because the signs of the town say I must move and all this. And, and they're, what they're actually arguing is that I must subsidize something that is dying, that that will not be salvaged, because there is not enough economic function in that area. And therefore, their argument against my own is that their word for asking of a subsidy from me has no greater moral value over my own value of saying, I have my own needs and the means of survival as well versus your own. Where yours, you have the mobility to change your situation. I don't, I, my mobility is saying I don't need to change my situation. But you are asking me to artificially save something that is already in decay and declining and has no economic function behind it. That's the whole point, isn't that the whole point of terrorists is to save something that is already dying by normal economic laws? Why should we pay? Because it costs for me to do what I'm doing every day, paying normal taxes without the subsidy to that person that's arguing against me, is is more much more efficient than paying taxes and then above and beyond because the exponential cost of keeping something alive that is dead is far more expensive. Well, and say, and and that, and that goes into the whole, you know, where do you draw the line thing? Because the argument we want to make here is, well, we need to take care of the poor. And I'm like, why? What? Why? 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 Why, why? why do we need to take care of the poor? Why don't we, ena- why don't we enable mechanisms for them to get themselves out of poverty? Because, exactly. like, like you're saying, you, if you're investing in something that's dead, it's never going to be alive again. Stop investing in it. Move on to something that has a chance of living. <laughs> well, no, not only that. We do take care of our poor. You know, my mother-in-law comes from Guatemala, and my wife does too, and they look at our poor and they laugh. They said, we don't know what poor is. Okay. Uh, our, our mobility in this country, like I just stated, is leaps and bounds on how well the poor move and gain wealth. And, and actually how rich can lose it all and then start all over again. That is the opportunity of this country. That is what people miss. Because everybody wants these static things. Hell no. And the proof burden is on you argue against me that the poor of year A is the same poor of year, of year B. Bullshit. I, I, I would argue that there are there is a small group that is the perpetually poor, but our, oh. a, our, our aid programs... Okay, wait, 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 wait. Let's put this in perspective. I took my mother-in-law, which comes to economic priority on how a consumer behaves. I took my mother-in-law to the poor section of Houston. Her first statement is they have electricity. Her second statement is they all have bigger cars than I own. Fancier cars than I own. But their house looks like shit. They're all wearing shoes that are more expensive than three of my wardrobes combined. But yet their house looks like shit. They go out on the town and have fun and have iPods, MacBook Airs, and MacBook Pros. But the food they buy, eh, not so much. It is 
not the government's place to correct someone's priority and how they wish to consume. End of line. Well, okay. There, the, you're talking about... The, there, there's poor and there's poor and then there's poor. Uh, when I talk about poor, I talk about legitimate poor. I talk about people who are camping illegally because they don't have a house over their head and they're trying to keep from getting arrested while they sleep. And they actually make more money a day than I do begging on the streets. Some of them do, some of them don't. It depends. And I agree, some of them, yes. And some of them are there because they want to be, some of them are there because they've fallen on hard times. And there are people who work their way out of that, and there are ones who like that. Yeah, if they aren't really there and they aren't doing something with it, like the, the, then they do have an actual uh, health problem, mental problem. I would say they're in depression or something like that. Of which, of which, yes, there, there are there are a few of them that are like that. That it's not, it's not, and therefore, what the argument is, then it shouldn't be an economic model. There is nothing that an economic model will do um, per se. It's then that they need treatment to get them out of that depression to uh, become productive, right? And that's one, and that, and that's getting into 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 my health laws, of which I have a whole plethora of ideas of how to address that one person. But to be really, let me, we have to be frank here. We have to be frank here. The United States poor is not the poor of the world. Okay, I mean, for crying out loud. The people that I freaking helped and volunteered for in, in Hurricane Katrina that were displaced because of the floods had fucking Xbox 360s, fucking PS3s, and, I, and, and, and freaking, they had the uh, most expensive uh, uh, computers there. I mean, they weren't, you could, my mother-in-law would look at them and say, you are no fucking where near being poor. There, there are poor in the United States. They are a very small. They, they are not as many as you think. Our definition of poor in the United States, and, and our definition of poor is pretty laughable, actually. It uh, is. The rest it, of the world looks at us and scoffs. They don't fucking get it, man. No. Uh, it, 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 here's the thing. Um, I've actually been classified as poor. I've been fucking poor. I got. Uh, I, 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 I have also actually been poor. I have been the freaking bum on the street without a penny to my name or a house or my head or any of that bloody shit. Uh, so, like I said, that is, a, a, unfortunately, that's a world that um, isn't... You're a type of total U.S. mobility, economic mobility, then. Say what? Then you are a total great example of US economic well, that, that's part of why I get so freaking mad at this because if we break this system, I'd still be a fucking bum on the street. The more, <laughs> thank you, the more restrictions we put in our good intentions to help make our mobility less and less. And then we can't move anymore and then we are truly static in the positions that we have. So, yeah, I, I mean, it's... Now, now, okay, I gotta continue. Go ahead. Hold on. Are you saying that the state sales tax would also go away? No, that's an apple. Okay. We are replacing a bunch of oranges. Okay. And I, oh, you're so fucking wrong, Herman Cain. See, I don't have a fucking state income tax, Herman Cain, and I don't want fucking one. I also don't want an increased sales tax. I'm at 8.25. I don't need to fucking go 9% on my fucking sales tax. I'm going to be getting a commercial basket that has apples and. I'm actually not even at 9% sales tax. I am 8 Eight cents to the dollar. Texas is federal oh, tax. Uh, taxes. No, no, no. Don't that, they don't pay more taxes. No, they just don't have credibility when it comes to repealing Obamacare. Your, your, your plan was the basis for Obamacare. You didn't stop and stop Obamacare. It is true. I don't matter what. Didn't Romney says that Obamacare was the basis for Obamacare. Although I will give Mitt Romney credit, I will give him credit. I don't like Mitt Romney. I I can't like Mitt Romney. I don't like Mitt Romney. I I will give him credit. Mitt Romney has done a lot of he, he, admittedly, by Democrat, his plan in Massachusetts was used, but he was in the most, one of the most liberal states in this fucking country as a, as a GOP governor. What are you supposed to do? <laughs> if you, politics are politics, right? You, get, you win to get elected and you try your best to change um, your state. If you are if you're opposed to the masses, um, but by golly, 
you're you're handicapped by the majority demographic of your state. You know, and and I believe him when he says that okay, this was probably a cheaper solution for Massachusetts than than, than it was. Um, okay. Uh, but the way he, I don't know, the way he defends it, and he just won't come to terms with it. All you know, I think all he really needs is, well, I think he has kind of said it. But he's not, I, I don't think he comes off convincing enough. And I, I also, myself, don't believe him when he says that. He doesn't believe in that plan. Uh, because he could have asked Governor to sit fuck it. You know, I, I cannot endorse it on principle. This and if it costs me an election, it costs me an election. Because that would be my position, hopefully. You know, I, I haven't been, I, I am an HOA president and I don't get paid for that job, so I'm totally voluntary in managing all the homes I have. I have 452 home units in, in my head. I, I don't get paid, so I can't be lobbied. That's part of the, part of the thing of, of uh, why I say don't tax corporations. If you don't, if you don't tax corporations, guess what? They're not going to lobby anymore because they have nothing to lobby for. You know, it's like uh, other than regulation, which which is a smaller part of taxes. But uh, uh, Romney is, uh, I'm not convinced that uh, he couldn't be swayed because if he could be swayed in principle in Massachusetts, because the Democratic says something. Name me a politician that can't be swayed in principle. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Say, are we going to talk about the issues or character there's assassinations been, there's of the... There's been quite a few in the United States history that has gone against politics. Um, I, I would even cite a recent uh, Ronald Reagan was one. Did he not disband many of the components of, of our health industry and dismantling this regulation? The air industry and other things he buckled on, but he was a very huge pioneer in, in dismantling and deregulating and making things cheaper. Um, President Clinton, I would cite as well. He was also on board with the New Cambridge and the Republican Congress to disband AFDC and take us to the state level, uh, bringing us about PRWROA, Personal Responsibility Work Reconciliation Act, um, which was really good. Um, So, you know, those are, those are presidents uh, of recent history that I would say that have, uh, both, on both sides of the party, on either, on either party that, I, that have gone against principle as politicians on, I think, some very powerful topics. Uh, and health care is massive that uh, Romney has not convinced me that he won't sway. Obamacare, and to say that you're going to repeal it, you just you have no track record on that, but that we can trust you that you're going to do that. But this is something that was crafted for Massachusetts. It would be wrong to adopt this as a nation. That's not you're, you're saying, you're you're saying, you're you're saying, saying Yeah, see, he says that, but I'm not convinced on uh, saying that. Rob Paul's laughing. Rob Paul is laughing. Dude, that was awesome. He just fucking laughed. Chance, let me speak. the break. You had your chance. Let me speak. You're out of time. You're out of time. Those people that hire illegals ought to be penalized. And then you lose all of your standing from my perspective because you hired illegals. Bam! Yes, Perry. But you know, I sent that I sent the, the Perry campaign so many fucking emails. Because nobody in the nation understands what the fuck he's talking about with his illegal immigrant shit. And and Perry is harsh, harsh on 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 uh, uh, companies here for hiring. I, you can go to McAllen, Texas, and I swear to God, I, you drive these fucking areas where there's like, like a fucking hundred cameras on either side. I mean, I was terrified. Like going down to McAllen, I saw the border, and you hit these areas in Texas that there's like 50 cameras on each side of that freaking road, and you drive through it. And I mean, holy shit. It's, uh, all kinds of technology that, that Texas is employed to uh, uh, mitigate
navigate this. And um, our fences, when I went down to Macau, are just technology. You see, Perry is deploying, which is coming out of Texas, but tremendous amount of tech. He doesn't believe in building the Great Wall of China. I agree with him. Building the Great Wall of China doesn't do shit. It doesn't keep out the people that you want. You know, and, and, and these other freaking Republicans are against, oh, he doesn't want to build a wall. Of course he doesn't want to build a wall. You, he wants to have an intelligence operation on the border like we have in Texas. Isn't it ironic that now some of those beginning to believe in the Texas and Perry has asked for federal support because the state is not responsible for immigration. By law, isn't that not the lawsuit between Arizona versus the United States of America on who was in charge of immigration? And yet Texas has, out of our own budgets, built these, these technologies and we put troops on the ground. And Perry's argument is that once they're in, we penalize employ and, and, and employers for doing it. But at what they was saying at the education level, they can't even apply to get that education, uh, which, which, which was unless they apply for citizenship or apply to become a resident. So in essence, he's turning undocumented people into documented. In other words, economically speaking, He's turning a person who is unaccountable for actions by law to becoming accountable for actions by law and not hurting the economic hiring process at the same time. And his argument was, well, okay, so I can't kick them out because the United States government won't let me kick them out. So what is the economic viable option to do at this point? Make them productive. Well, we're, we're, we're jumping all over the place here, but my, my I've told you where I officially stand on the immigration things. See, my, like my wife's from Guatemala, and she and no, I... No, my, my, my official stance on the immigration thing is, uh, uh, it's no punish, no sign. It's an issue with the school system because the school system's federally funded. I happen to agree with you, it shouldn't be, it should be local funded. So, exactly. there, so, there, so there isn't a federal issue there because the, that's where the issue there comes from. It's federal dollars going to pay for non-citizens. If a local area decides it wants to do that, then that should be the decision of the local area. But it becomes an issue because federal funds are intermingled exactly. in, local, in local involvements, which creates the issue. However, uh, I, one thing I have never understood or we do not do in the United States of America, I... I, I I am not a fan of illegal immigration, but for uh, 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 but but um, one thing that we would be of great benefit to the United States because the United States uh, was made strong by immigrants and it could be made strong by immigrants Absolutely. would be if we created a streamlined process. Because it, 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 the reality is, if you're coming from a really poor country, it is ridiculously expensive to come to the United States. I do not think the United States should pay their bill because we do not know who. However, if you want to come here and you want to work it off, well, basically we need a work it off visa where I want to come here, I have a debt, I have to pay for the cost of my immigration, you're going to take it right out of my paycheck, I'm going to work, I'm going to work to be part of this country, I'm going to pay my taxes, and I'm going to pay an extra tax to repay the debt, right. to pay for the cost, to pay for son, to pay for my citizenship, to earn my citizenship. Right. You just created a way for people who legitimately yes. want to contribute to the United States, make right. the United States better, to legally immigrate into this country. I, I'm not, don't give them a handout. They have to work for it. They have to want it. And they're not stealing a job from anyone if they're doing that. They're working just as hard as everybody else. If they got that job and they keep it, they're working just as hard as everybody else. Yeah. I hate the argument that illegal immigrants steal jobs. It's not actually it's not a true economic argument because everybody takes a snapshot. When a job is is filled, another job exponentially is created because that person becomes a consumer. With the exception of the current economic client, but that's an entirely unrelated issue. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what I'm saying is that is that economically, on a model, and the way it works is 
that if someone becomes productive and earns an income, they also become a consumer, which means they consume. But exponential number creates a, an increase in consumption, which creates more jobs as well. In other words, economically, you can never argue the point that jobs are stolen. Uh, and I'm not for illegal immigrants. I'm just saying that that argument cannot really technically be made. Well, no, but see, the problem is what's missing is like is, is what I was talking about. There isn't a good legal means for many situations, so we need uh, to yeah. create my one problem, for people who want to contribute. My problem with new immigrants is this, is that you realize how many new, or not new, but old diseases have been reintroduced to the United States because of unchecked illegal immigration? Uh, uh, that's the other reason to have a legal revenue so they don't have to try and do it illegally. They go right. through the channels, they're properly exactly. screened for diseases. The other thing, and you know what? You know, people are like, oh, crime will go up. Okay, make a condition You make a condition of that, no felonies. I, you know, I'm sorry, I, I, I will say felonies because local misdemeanors, I'm sorry, but you know, people, you know what? Everybody gets a local misdemeanor. You don't say, oh, no crime of any kind. And right. you know what? It, well, that, yeah, not only that, not only that, they are not accountable financially um, in anything where, let's say, an accident occurs and they don't civil conflict occurs. If you okay. have them on a, if you have them on the visa I'm talking about, they damn well are because yes. they're here and in I the system. Say, undocumented people are, they are pretty much can do whatever the fuck they want and, and if you are in a civil conflict with them, can escape paying your restitution for whatever the damage may well, have Well, I mean, you assuming you can find them, you can sign but because of their position, there really isn't any legal recourse you can actually take against them. That's, I, that's what I'm getting at. And, 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 and that's why I say a civil conflict. And um, the the deal of it is is that I paid sixteen hundred dollars just to make my mother in law a freaking permanent resident. That's insane to me. Well, no, it's like and like I'm saying, it, it's there should. It, what? Why should I fucking have to pay sixteen hundred dollars to make her goddamn permanent resident? That is utterly. See. The border, I view the border as a security issue. The border has nothing to do with immigration. The border is there as a security measure. Immigration is a separate issue. How do we, how much do we charge? How many people do we intake? How do we intake them? How do we process them? And so the thing of it is, is that, I, 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 I hate to say it, is that, like, is that, for instance, Mexico constantly gripes against the United States for not allowing for legal migration in Mexico. Well, the thing of it is, is that we, logistically, because everything has limits per year, because we can only process so much, um, have to be fair to every other country that want, wants to immigrate here as well. Just because you're next door doesn't give you privilege. And that's the point I'm getting at. The reason why we have quotas is because we try to be balanced in saying, well, if somebody from country X, which is... 10,000 miles away. No, honestly, your best bet for getting into the United States, especially if you're broke, uh, is the um, diversity lottery right now. Yeah, but a lot, but see, but nobody wants to win the lottery. And, and, and clearly because Mexico and uh, um, it's easier from the lack of incentive to stay in Mexico. Uh, and, and I'm not talking about just about Mexicans because... Uh, you, you know how you know how the border issue of recent really started up. Oh, uh, I'm aware. Because yeah, because terrorist Muslims started impersonating Mexicans in Wisconsin, state of Texas. Well, I didn't well, really uh, know that. Uh, okay, but uh, see that that's more that okay. I, 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 I do not want I, I do not want this to turn into the oh those oh, those evil terrorists they're everywhere those evil terrorists they're everywhere but that's all the more reason to have everybody come to be incentivizing everybody to come through a, a legal processing because it, the reality is if you incentivize the legal processing uh, process and you make it. Uh, effective and so on and everything else, then the people who are going through that other way stick out like a fucking sore thumb. And, and it's... Yeah, it's like, you know, Rick, or Romney made fun of Rick Perry's bi-national plan, which nobody freaking knows. It's actually a capitalist way of approaching healthcare. It's about making healthcare cheaper because we get so many illegal immigrants that come here for treatment, but the state was tired of paying for it, and we were trying to come up with 
and the bi-national plan is actually a market-driven way of making healthcare cheaper, um, uh, capitalistic, capitalistically, um, versus being on a state goal. So Mitt Romney just was speaking out of his ass, and he didn't fucking know, understand what a bi-national plan is. You really love. You have decided you're going to vote for Rick Perry, haven't you? Well, that's, uh, what, 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 I mean, right now, Rick, I mean, Rick Perry. I lived under Rick Perry. But, but I mean, I I know what the man does, how he taxes, and I've lived it. He's a state's rights person. I, I I I know just as many people who live under Rick Perry who claim he has nothing to do with any of that. So. <laughs> Like you bring them next time. They won't come on the show. They right. <laughs> they're full of shit. They're full of shit. You cannot discredit a man who's been who's been that long. If he were here just as a one-term governor, all power to them on their argument. He has been here three terms. Sorry, that is way too long to discredit. And, and they can live. And I will just tell your friends are not because. Really? Uh, there, 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 it's too long of a period of time uh, for now. The the uh, the what should I say? I mean, because I know that there's other. I mean, there's Rick Perry's not perfect, right? But. I, I just wasn't expecting the debate to be the Rick Perry for president debate. Was all <laughs> I thought we were going to be going over the issues. But Ron, Paul's my, Ron Paul's my other favorite guy. He's also from Texas, <laughs> but you know Ron Paul's also also my favorite. Um, the the thing of it is, is that 